Manny Diaz is the football coach at Miami, at the U. He is in kids' houses recruiting yesterday, whilst everyone knows and no one denies his university is in contract talks with another coach, Mario Cristobal from Oregon. And this is all happening on the most public of stages, but they don't even have the decency to pull him and be like, look, until we get this thing settled, don't be out there recruiting for crying out loud. You're making us look stupid. You're making yourself look stupid. It, there is just no soul in this. There is no, there's nothing in this that feels like it should be connected to higher education in this country, <laughs> right? Like, this is college we're talking about. This, this is theoretically supposed to be a fairly high-minded endeavor, and yet it is being treated like one of the slimiest business oh, yeah. that you could ever imagine. But Hembo brings up a great point, so I'll let you make it. Lest you think you should feel sorry for Manny Diaz right now, let's remind everyone how he got to the U. <laughs> well, in 2019, he was hired and introduced as the head football coach at Temple University in Philadelphia and left three weeks later for Miami, his dream job. And in those three weeks, apparently, while talking to people at Miami once that job became available, didn't even inform the Temple people that he was interested in leaving until after he left and never even wound up talking to the player. So I guess in some sense it you know, could have ha you know, couldn't happen to a better guy. So I guess the question, I, I, I like that you make that point. Which tenure was <laughs> less eventful, Bill Belichick's as the head coach of the New York Jets <laughs> or Manny Diaz's as the head coach at Temple? He spent three weeks. Uh, he was only, weeks. Bill was only the coach of the Jets for one day. And then he wrote on a cocktail napkin, I no longer want to be the HC of the NYJ. <laughs> and he left after one day. But at least he knew the players' names. Like, he had been the defensive yeah. coordinator there and the head coach in waiting. Right. So he had more of an impact, I guess, than Manny Diaz, who never met with the players <laughs> at Temple and took another job. So this is the business they've chosen. Right. I'm sorry, uh, what are you saying so, to me, Bubba? Uh, speaking of Manny Diaz, Adam Rittenberg, uh, who covers college football for us, Manny Diaz is out, Eddie, at Miami. He oh. just tweeted that. Maybe he can get the Temple job. <laughs> <laughs> that is open. Bring him back. And Temple does need a coach. <laughs> is that open? Is Temple open? Yeah, yeah it they is. Fire yes. their coach. It is. Yeah. Oh, That's would that right. be Imagine the, if he goes there, he no. needs to would go. Would that be the ultimate irony? Is he still on, is he still on payroll? Like, I, I mean, that, that would be hilarious. <laughs> he needs to go to Temple. I, I, let's make this happen. We should orchestrate let's this, Let's right? make this happen. Get Temple on the phone. Get Nagandi on the phone. <laughs> 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 we need to make this happen. Oh. Anyway, so that's just an embarrassment, and they're just awful. No what can you say? Anyway, uh, the college this weekend, the games were awesome. The Oklahoma State-Baylor game was incredible if you didn't watch it. It comes down literally to one final play and a half a yard. But what the games on Saturday did was it left little suspense for yesterday. Like Bryce Young was unbelievable. Bryce Young gives you, I think, you could make an argument, Bryce Young gives you one of the five great big game performances you've ever seen from a quarterback in college football history. I don't know them off the top of my head. But to do that in that spot against that defense, people were talking about that defense being one of the greatest of all time. They average giving up less than seven mm -hmm. points a game. And he shredded them. Shredded. So he was unbelievable. Watching that game was unbelievable. Does anyone have any issue with anything the committee did? I assume everyone knows by now. Alabama's one. Michigan is two. Georgia's three. Cincinnati is four. Does anyone have an issue with what they did? Hembo. Well, well I, the only objection I would have is I think Georgia should have been two. But that's all semantics because they're just going to play – you know, it's the, the outcome is the same. The reason I think Georgia should be too is because that there should be they should be re rewarded for being the best team the whole season. And obviously, we think Alabama is great. So aside from that, I think they got everything right. Obviously, I mean, I think Michigan has a has a better resume than Georgia. I know their loss isn't as good, but mm -hmm. their it's not a bad loss. Where did Michigan State wind up? Michigan State wound up at like Top nine, 10, I think. Right. So it's a it's a respectable loss, oh, sure. and they beat better teams mm -hmm. than Georgia did. Georgia didn't beat anybody. At the end of the day, Michigan State beat Ohio State, who winds up in a big in a New Year's Six Bowl. They um, they lost to Michigan State. Who else did they beat? They beat Penn State. They who else? Does, what, what's their other big win? I, I feel like they have another good yeah, win. Yeah, there was one more. They didn't get to play Wisconsin, unfortunately. Iowa was like 15 or something going into that Iowa game, and they mm -hmm. shellack them. Mm -hmm. So whatever. I don't agree with you on that Wisconsin one. Too. One way or another. Here's mm -hmm. what I will say. Here's the one thing I will say that I think is unfair. If we perceive Cincinnati as the soft spot, as you would have liked going into this to be playing Cincinnati, you'd rather play them 
And, and let's just let's even take out of the equation the fact that they're not a power five team. The best thing you can do is play the four. You want to be the one because you get to play the four. In theory, the four is the worst of the four teams that are in there. If indeed the reason Alabama is one and Michigan is two is because they didn't want Alabama and Georgia to play each other in the semifinal, that's totally unfair to Michigan. Now, if you want to make the argument that Alabama deserved to be won over Michigan because of the quality of that win, okay, I, 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 I'll hear that. And I, to me, I think it was six and one half dozen the other. But I think everyone knew that whatever they did, they weren't going to put Alabama and Georgia against each other in the semifinal because no one wants to see those two teams play again in three weeks. And if that is unfair to Michigan, if Michigan is, it should be number one, then they should get the opportunity to play number four. Do you agree with that? I agree with that totally. But I don't think Michigan has as strong a case to be number one as Alabama does. I mean, I've, I've heard that. I've heard people whose opinion I really value say that. But to me, I mean, Alabama won the best league in America and beat the best team in the country, and they have one loss. To me, it was pretty clear that Alabama. Well, their loss is worse. Loss. They have a worse loss. They have a worse loss uh, than Michigan's. And all of a sudden, see what happens. And this is just the funny thing. Twitter wakes up on Sunday and says Georgia's not that good anyway. Right. Like Georgia didn't beat anybody all year long. So you can you can dissect this thing any way you want, one way or another. Um, well, I have a lot more to say about that as we continue, and I will. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.